Gillian Ayres is one of the leading British abstract painters of her generation and still vigorously prolific at the age of 85. Her latest exhibition of vibrant new works on canvas and prints opens next week at Alan Christea Gallery in London. I went to visit her in her studio deep in the Cornish countryside to talk about her work. You've stayed deeply faithful to painting throughout your career, even though your long career has spanned a time when all sorts of other ways of making art were fashionable. I mean, ever since I was 13, I, I'm totally obsessed with it, actually. And, um, well, there it is, and I recognise it. I found these books at, sc at school, books on Cezanne, Monet, Van Gogh. No, I just thought, Christ, painting can do this. Are you aware of being influenced by... Anybody? Who are the... Who Younger, are the I got Pollock for years, but... I mean, Batiste, but I, I even sort of... Even finally see Picasso, I suppose, but... It's a funny thing with abstract art. I mean... If it's figurative, people go on about what is there. Even down to a sort of Rembrandt portrait, they always go on about how he paints noses in the end. But, but with abstraction... It's perfectly true, people go on about other painting. To me, painting is a visual thing. I find this terribly important, and, and, and there is a visual world. People like to understand, and, and I wish they wouldn't. Um, I wish they'd just look. It, it's visual, and, and it's... Well, I, I go further, yes, I don't want this sort of understanding. There is no understanding in this way. about making prints. You've been making prints um, for a long time. That's still a sort of important part of your of your practice. Um, is it something you enjoy or is it something that uh, pays the bills or is it something that... No, it's not at all what pays the bills. I, they are a way of, of, of reproduction but um, they're also a very creative thing. I mean you can you can discover what you like with them uh, visually as much as you can with painting. Are the paintings changing? All my life I've, I've sort of changed a lot too because it's a sort of fault in a way because where you should go on perfecting and get better and better I, you also sort of get knowing and I sort of always looking for something too sort of trying to find out something. Do you find your style has changed over the years in response to you know, simply being older and see, seeing things differently. I mean, what I see I don't is, know the truth is something this. much, much more graphic has, has entered your work. Very strong lines, um, a very different use of shapes and something that's almost verging on the figuratives. Perhaps 30 or 40 years ago, your abstraction was of a very different type. Is that something that you feel in yourself? Is it something that's just happened? I physically couldn't do those paintings now, if I'm, if I'm honest. But would I, would I be doing them if I physically could or not? I don't actually know the truth. I can't answer you. I simply know how I have changed. But yes, um, somewhere in this room there's a ladder. I don't know where it is. It was in the garage. It was in the garage, is it? Well, exactly. Um, when I first came here, yes, I don't know how I didn't break my hips or something. I, it was so dangerous, nobody, I, I shouldn't have been allowed. I used to uh, fill the whole of that wall with a canvas and I used to go up the ruddy ladder. So I used to take great handfuls of paint and they were incredibly physical at that stage. Did you paint with your hands? Absolutely. Oh, did you? But did I change because, because, because I couldn't go up the ladder anymore or did I change anyway? And people even thought of ways where I could st still continue doing this with pulleys and things coming down and God knows what, it was a certain stage of all this. Um, <laughs> Michelangelo <laughs> hoist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I see a lot of plant forms in your recent oh, you work, do. <laughs> a lot, between leaves and seed pods and bark and um, 
the light coming through leaves. I see that a lot. You'd never paint outside, presumably. I did, at a very early age, straight after the war in 1946. Strange scenes in London that don't exist anymore, like strange tea urns and cafes. With, yes, one was made to do these drawings. And up to about 53, I was about 23, one still dutifully would make a drawing, and then really they, they went. So now when you make a work, you don't start with any form of drawing. You start I never with... blow things up. You never blow things up. But there's no reason why you shouldn't. Lots of people do work that way. Make a small drawing and, yeah. and then project it and on And it is larger. also pushing a thing on, it could be. Mm. But I, I never really do. It's always a thing in itself. And your colours, which are so... I mean, they, they are the thing that, for everybody like me who loves your work, the first thing we think of when we think of your work is, is your astonishing use of colour. And that also, presumably, was something that was rather frowned on when you were young. I call it dirtying down and, and well, <laughs> it was putting white, uh, dirtying down and sort of muddying up or something. Yes, I know, I did, I did then when I was 16, sorry. So you've been working towards more well, and more tone, and more colour. I don't like, ah, uh, yes, you, you hit it. Um, I don't like tone. There is such a thing, but, but, but I like intensity. Thank you.